Good morning, everyone. We're ready to start the meeting of June the 21st, 2022. Our first order of business will be approval of the previous meeting, board, uh, meeting minutes. Make motion that we approve the uh, previous meeting minutes. Okay. Motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Our next order of business is personal property value changes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, a few things. Look at not that much, but a few things. Look at um the first that just chain is nine four three five five, which is selfie paradise. It's located at all the mall. Um is recommended to reduce the value due to an incorrect estimation for 2020 and 2021. For both the years, the value is only $10,000, and we have reduced it to $2,817. Um, the second one is a is 92962. It's a boat. It's an Avalon uh, pont pont pontoon boat, and the account has been voided for 2021 and 2022. Uh, the seller sold the boat in 2020, and so both 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 years go from twenty thousand two two three two zero. Next on the agenda are some uh, appeal agreements and deal decisions. Um, the first page, as you see, all um, appeal um, a, a, a agreement. So these were all agreed upon decisions changes. Burlington, which is over the fifteen percent was reduced 25% because of the COVID uh, pandemic, I guess you would say. Towards the end of the year, Burlington had reopened in 2020, 20, they opened it in the 2020 and basically dumped everything that they had. So they fire sold everything and it was a strong store at that. Um, Jane, Jane Hadley was a motor vehicle that was reduced by 18.9% due to the fact that the car was a rebuilt title and not a clean title. AT&T had two major drops, uh, which was uh, 955 five, and it went down 23% and 92017 went down 50.5555% 50, 50 because we had, the, we had the categories for those properties to be bought. Um, so that was a correction in category group. The, ne the next page is 67 over home at Arbor Village. Um, these were also its DOE decision. And if you go down the list, you'll see one at uh, 30 at 30% decrease, which is a uh, negotiated value based on the fact that the mobile home wasn't in the quite the condition that if we that we thought it thought it was. The other one is another major change of 17 percent and it was almost pretty much in the same same condition because it's a much older home than the district super home but 1968. Um and all the rest of changed for about five five percent basically five to twelve percent. So question for you on from on Harvard Village. Yes. Did the the, the management or the developers come to us with these requests. I mean, these, this is this seems to be many of the uh, many of the lots, many of the he, properties. He owned the entire the entire um, development. So okay, so the owner came to us and said, "Hey, um, yeah, he did." Okay, and what happened is they had been on a BOE freeze for the last four years. So some some they had been on BOE freeze, and we didn't adjust the values one way or the other for the. Uh, 2021, 2022. So they've been on BOE free since 2019. And they needed to be adjusted. However, mobile home values are kind of fluctuating. So they went up one year down, up, down. So it's kind of a catch with two. Okay. Thank you. A quick question going back to the personal properties. Uh, just curious. Uh, if you could give us maybe just a little bit more insight. I know you talked about the Burlington Coat Factory and the COVID, and I'm just kind of um, my question, I guess, in regards to COVID 
and you're saying that they had to close down for a period of time. And I'm just curious as far as the precedence that's being set if other businesses and companies come and to share that same sentiment. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on that or maybe some insights into the decision there. Um, no one else really appealed based on COVID. Burlington did. Um, knowing what the market did hold, if someone had, we would probably have considered them as well, but no one has uh, come to us about COVID at all. So, uh, but however, I know Burlington would, their, their business model caused them to have to buy product. At, they guaranteed, they guaranteed to buy a product that they couldn't sell. So they end up with product that they couldn't sell. Yeah, one thing I'll, I'll mention, and I appreciate you asking that question, Martin, uh, I'm curious as to whether Burlington took advantage of, in their case, uh, you know, payroll protection program or something like that. PPP. They may have. Uh, uh, that's on the payroll. That's not. For, that's not for the uh, Yeah, for, it's for income. Right. Uh, but those were substantial, substantial numbers. I'm pretty sure. And I'm just wondering if that's something that we took into consideration, or at least asked the question when we were evaluating. Oh, we did. Oh, we did. We did. This is only on the inventory that they that they mandated to purchase from dealers, Macy's, and those stores that they uh, mandated to purchase the stuff from. So it was a reduction in inventory, not a reduction in inventory valuation, not in asset asset valuation. Okay. So it's a little bit different than the payroll portion of it. Yeah, they got they they got paid to stay, to stay closed too. But they still, when they reopened, had all this inventory that they had purchased that they already purchased. Rather, they'd already purchased that they could sell because Macy's had been closed, dealers had been closed, these kids had been closed. So they all the store that they had to buy from had also been closed. So all the inventory that they had that they had bought that kind of got stuck in the chain. They got stuck. And they had to get rid of the best. Yeah, that way we can frame it as an inventory oh, valuation issue. Yeah, yeah. So, inventory valuation issue, and it's thank goodness <laughs> the good, the good part about that is for the most part, COVID is over in the aspect of businesses not having any. So, shoot. Okay. Well, thank you for the explanation. I know we, we're not going to be able to solve that here, but I did want to just ask. And then, I guess one question I did have going back to the AT and T mobility. Uh, specifically account 92017 and just want to get a, a little bit of understanding on why that one was such a very degree of change there that was like half so what was so unique again about that unit versus all the other ones we had that one grouped incorrectly we had the radio equipment group in group three which is the lowest it's the highest appreciation factor I mean the lowest appreciation factor so we put it we had it grouped in a uh, 13 to 15 year grouping, and it should have been in a, in a five to seven year group. Okay, five to seven. Okay, I understand. So this change is only for tax year 2021. Yes. Okay. Yes, it doesn't, it doesn't proceed forward. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the personal property um, digest change in Marine as well as the BOE decisions dated on June 14th. And 15. And 15. 15. And 15. Yes, and 15. Thank you. Second. The motion to second in the first sessions. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion there. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we have a parcel and a digest change for 2020 and 2021. Parcel 45 1578. We are recommending a correction to the flow base for the prior two years 2021 and 2020. Um, about three months ago, I believe we did the removal of the unfinished or the finished basement that was not there, and we did not adjust the flow base correctly. 
I want to give thanks to uh, <laughs> to Leanne for going back. She went back several years in order to get this float on this one correct. The owner noted that the float base was incorrect. So Leanne had to go back several years to make sure that we got the float base correct based on the fact that it was not a 485 square foot finished basement. The float base correction for year 2021 went from 203,743 to 205,143 with no change in the value of the three $321,500. The float base correction for tax year 2020 went from 205,443 to 207,443 with no change in the value of 268,200. The, the next one is an appeal that we need to certify to DOE. The parcel 744-18221 was uh, corrected due to reconfiguration of the land with the parcel next door, parcel 29, and we uh, was a vacant lot. And then we put the 5,000 square foot warehouse was moved to this particular parcel. Uh, they had the right to appeal it, so they did. So we need to get this one certified to BOE and see if we can get the appeal uh, settled. Um, the notice went out in. Uh, December 30th, 2021. And uh, like I said, they appealed it and we had a value of 263,300 on it. We are recommending a no change at this time for that particular value. And we just need more to go on to BOE so that it can be settled. Um, the following parcels are residential settlement agreements and BOE results. Some of the agreements were made, I believe, before BOE, uh, June 14th and June 16th. None of the changes were over 15%. And um, if you can see these here, I'm not gonna read every single one, but uh, these were the BOE agreements and changes that were made. Any questions on those? Motion to make motion that we approve the uh, uh, real property uh, uh, motion uh, changes and agreements as uh, it noted. Second. The motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion bad. Thank you. Oh. Um, um, I have three parcels that we were going to discuss briefly. Um, this is for the conservation use cabinet. This is parcels 19357 and 193525. Uh, these were 10 units, a house and 34 acres and 61 acres. The property owner has appealed to the next level. We um, had the um, hearing last week for this one. It's the one, the two parcels that are in breach and the penalty has been assessed. And so they uh, stated since the Board of Equalization agreed with us that the penalty is due, that they stated they're going to go to the next level. I have, of course, requested that in writing, have not received it yet, but it's uh, it should be coming. And then the other uh, parcel I have is parcel 212511. The Albertsons, uh, he transferred from himself to his son. It's just a vacant 12.66 wildlife track. And uh, for the transfer to the son, the son continued. So I recommend we approve on that. And that's all. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the cool assassins as well. Yeah, that's good. A motion to second any further discussion. I don't think so. Aye. 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 Motion to second. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The only thing is business, business we have a board policy update. Everybody is free to talk. And uh, Meredith will uh, help us here with the 
groups in the board on the off days. This is a policy update of just how to appeal a property tax assessment uh, based on the statute, Georgia Code 48 It is just a very detailed process, as you can see from the memo, uh, because there are three different ways to appeal it. It's either to a court of equalization, a hearing officer, or an arbitrator. And each different, different avenue has very specific timelines and the time frames that have to be met. So this is a synopsis of that, which will be a policy and it will be able to assist in taxpayers and board members knowing how to go through the process and navigate it. Uh, this doesn't include absolutely everything that goes to every single avenue, but it's the major points and the different time frames that have. I don't know if there's any specific questions, but I can go through briefly what each of the different talk about on the first page appeals to the Board of Equalization regarding all matters. They can either do a written notice of appeal, they can mail it in, they can come in person, and now there's also going to be the ability to file an appeal. And that's whether or not you want to go to the Board of Equalization, an arbitrator, or a hearing officer. So the website will be up and running. Yes, we are uh, working in conjunction with Two Public, which was approved to get that uh, portion. So it, um, for all mm -hmm. the and purposes, we should have one line of deal as of this year. So we're, it's, we're working um, as we speak to get that report out. And there will be a link on tax assessor's website that they can just click and they'll be able to fill in their information which app they want to take their appeal through um, so it will be very easy the value that they're going to put on it and then it will be automatically generated and sent to the board of assessors so this all of the verbiage that we have here is going to be available via that link as well as the the different ways to input or no, the verbiage we have here is it's generally available. It's the it's the law, it's Georgia law, so it's there um, for public knowledge. We're going to have specific details to assist with navigating the portal, and we will state the code um, in 48 and as we have. But it, the de these details are for our policy, so we have a, a, a policy manual that we need to update, and this will be on it. So for this purpose here, um, we have added to the policy, which is the online portion, and we have updated the, the outdated um, language that was on our policy, like our policy manual. So we, we are now current with the current guidelines uh, from the Department of from the, from the, I guess from the county website, um, how would the average person be able to access or would they be able to access our, our new policy? And um, it's not appeal. The appeal process is a policy that's been out there and general, general, general knowledge to everyone. Most people who have been appealing, uh, they know their rights to appeal. And it's on the website now that all taxpayers have a right to appeal and all that. The details of the policy, we didn't um, plan, we don't website right now. And uh, this one, uh, we're going to advise the public that they can go and appeal online, which is an addition to the existing policy that they could always appeal. But um, we will not include all the details of this policy. But people, uh, taxpayers will, be, will know what's out there, how they can appeal, and literature on how to appeal, and the types of appeals that will be on the website. Yeah, but the details of this policy update, no. Um, I do believe on the website, though, it does state that notices of assessment have to be appealed within 45 days. Yeah, I do believe, and that's the first step. So, and I believe that is on the website. And also, when everyone gets their notice of assessment, it it's specifically on, states on the notice you have 45 days to appeal, and it actually gives the deadline date in the notice that everybody gets. The website 
as Mr. Balfour just said, I don't think it goes into this detail about every single process. However, as a taxpayer moves through the process, like once an appeal is filed, they have 45 days to appeal it. If they choose to go to the BOE, then outlined here, the BOE has 180 days to do an initial review of that online appeal. And that point of that initial review is for the board of assessors to be able to assess, okay, do we need to make a change? Was this a mistake? So they do that initial review. And with 180 days, they have to then either send a change assessment notice to the taxpayer because they reviewed it and decided to change it. They send the notice to the taxpayer and it's outlined in there all of their rights. Yeah, that's already there. Yes. Also. Yeah. So although every single documentation that is discussed in here in the different notices, when that is sent to the taxpayer, all of that is outlined okay. in each notice. And if there isn't a change, then a no change letter goes out and the appeal, the appeal is automatically sent to the Board of Equalization. If a change is made within 180 days, then the taxpayer then has to do another notice saying they want to continue their appeals. But all of that information is in the change of assessment notice that's sent to them. And then it goes to the BOE and the BOE has a hearing and it goes through the same process and written notices are sent out. So although this document might not be on the website, they are provided all of this every step of the way. The general structure hasn't changed. No, no, no. no. The thing yeah. that changed, I think the last time the policy that was in the policy book was back from 2020. So a lot of the time frames had changed, um, different notice provisions. But the hearing officer appeal wasn't included in it. So we just have to update the policy and bring it up to date for all of the different processes. Um, as outlined here, if an appeal goes to an arbitrator, it's a different appeal process. And the taxpayer has to submit a certified notice of appeal within a specific time frame. If they don't provide that, then their appeal will be dismissed unless within that 45 day period they elect to go to the Board of Equalization. Um, because I think the Board of Assessors has found that sometimes taxpayers choose arbitration, but they don't realize that they have to pay for a certified appeal or a certified appraisal to be able to do that. And they don't want to come out of pocket for that cost. So the mechanism is in place for them to be able to then change the process and go to the BOE if they don't want to do that. But it's specific time frames that they have to do that. And we do communicate that to them. Yes. And arbitration, appeal comes in, we will respond to it. We are we are required to respond within 15 days. And we respond as let them know and say if it was a mistake, you can move it to, to the BOE. So we do, but they need the option that they want to move it to. They have to make that election. Yeah. If they don't do anything within 45 days and they don't submit a certified appraisal, then they have appeal is so but they are made aware of all yeah. that information i would hardly get arbitration i'm still i saw three and only one um container that there was sent. so it's yeah. for the reason that it's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely more yeah. okay. and then with hearing officer appeals the initial review period once it's filed uh, the board of, I actually did notice a typo in here that I will. Yeah, but I, on page nine at the top, I said the Douglas County Board of Equalization has 90 days to review the notice of appeal if it's elected to go to the hearing officer and it's the board of assessors. So in the heading, I wrote equalization, but it's actually assessors, and in the body, it talks about how. When it's an appeal to a hearing officer, the time frame for the board of assessors to do that initial review is only 90 days, not the 180 days to the board of equalization. And then it goes through the process with choosing the hearing officer and all the different notices and time frames for choosing the hearing officer. Um, one thing I do want to point out, I know that the board has talked about noting if it's a change in the assessment from the original value to the 
decision value of a 15% change. Um, but when there is an appeal to the Superior Court, the Board of Tax Assessors can't, if the change in assessment is 20% or less, it's not 15% or less, it's 20% or less, then the Board of Assessors needs approval from the Board of Commissioners to appeal that decision if we want to appeal it, not the taxpayer. So it's just, it's 20% and not 15%. I wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that. Mm -hmm. so just a quick question. Is there like a version where there's like a comparison of the current version versus the marked up version just so we could do a side-by-side -side comparison of the new language? Yes, I do have a red line. Okay. I know for me personally, that would be helpful just so I can compare what is the current language versus what's being proposed and me make any type of, you know, formulate any, you know, type of questions or comments related to what is the new proposed language. Okay, I can provide that to Steve and then it can be handed out to everybody. Okay, I would greatly appreciate that. I know for me that helps me a lot. Well, even for me, even, I'm, I'm lazier than you are. It would be great to have just a, a bulleted list of, of the changes as opposed to redlining of the whole document, but you know, whatever simple it's, I, I think even one would be very valuable. Well, we actually have the red line already, and I looked at the red line before, so uh, we didn't want to send it all at all, but um, we'll provide it for the board. With that, I'm going to ask some, um, so would we want to look at this again um, in details before a decision is made? Because there's one section that I'm, I'm looking for an approval at least for online appeals. So we we want to table this until the next meeting. Okay. Makes sense. Sounds like it. The biggest change. We're, we're talking about the online field. We haven't been doing the online field for right. Because that was the most important aspect of this document for the card that section. And I I got you got the highlights. Yeah. That would be the end. And that was a big challenge. But it's it's a topic. Yeah. To, to be able to be complicated. Yeah. And uh, it's a it's a big challenge. But if y'all want to do we need approval? You need approval of that online after uh, now? Yeah, but um, as soon as we get the red line view, the sooner the better because uh, we need uh, to to be able to to let the media know that they can do online appeal. So uh, once we get the I get the red line, I will, um, I do have a copy of it, so I just email it out. Okay. Great. I'll tell you right now, it might encourage us to have a meeting a little bit sooner than later, on, which we'll see. Yeah, I might. When we're, when we're, when we're sitting our next meeting day, we might make it for July the 2nd or something. July the 3rd. If it fits. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Yeah. We're, we're taking that. Definitely. Okay. That, that works for you, Martin? It does. I think what I heard was that we would have a separate meeting just to go through the proposed um, policy updates. Uh, no, we want to, um, since we want to get the red lines out to, to the board so they, so you can uh, actually see the, the, the changes that were made, we will, um, we'll table this, um, yeah. the finalizing this update, the policy update until oh. um, another meeting and it may be an earlier meeting than the that's all. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Um, we added all the policies. I got them right here. I have this. I don't want to do this. Thank you. This is the 
this is another policy that we wanted to bring forth before the Board of Assessors. This is regarding the conservation use covenant. And Leanne had run into just some questions regarding how to prove that you are a natural or a naturalized citizen. It was one of the requirements under the Cuba statute to prove the owner of the property has to be a natural or a naturalized citizen. That is one of, I think, seven designated uh, requirements. Well, there's seven different types of property owners that can be an owner under the Cuba statute. And one of them is a natural or a naturalized citizen. And Leanne had a question of what documents would satisfy proving that someone is. And we had stated that anybody that comes in needs to show this, even if it's someone that you have known for 25 years, they have to show that one of these documents to establish that they're a natural or a naturalized citizen. A birth certificate showing birth in the United States, a certificate of naturalization form N550, a certificate of citizenship, which is form N560, report of birth abroad of United States citizen, which is form FS240, or a valid unexpired United States passport. And we wanted to look for its approval of this so that Leanne could implement this. Is the uh, birth certificate? Uh, does it have to be designated as the original copy? Does it matter? I think as long as it's certified, if it's a certified original, if it's not the original, you can do a certified original. Um, I don't think we would accept just a That's copy. Just it has to be a certified Yeah. Any Make motion that we approve the uh, items uh, regarding uh, documents acceptable to approve ownership of the property or citizenship. Or citizenship. I'll second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? On first, Aye. Motion passed. It's on the report of personal property. Just wanted to do a report on the homestead status and get approval for the approvals of applications and the denial of applications. What we have here is the 2022 homestead count and um, S1 is your basic regular. We have 675 approved applications. Um, only one S4, which is 65 fixed income. We had 45 uh, veterans under 62 approved. We had 130 uh, 62 to 64 year old seniors. We had 70 65 and older seniors. We had 211 65 and older low income. We had four veterans between 62 and 64 years. We had six veterans 65 and older. We had eight uh, for disability. We did not have anybody under surviving spouse status for a total of 1,150 approvals. We also removed 1,293. I want to say that of the removals, they were like investors buying a property from the homeowner, so we had to remove the, the homestead status. That is probably what most of those 1,293 removals are, because we had a lot of investors purchase property this year. Um, the denials are 291, and I did a thrill. The ladies did a nice list of all the 291 um, denials, and we gave the reason why they were denied. The majority of the ones that were denied, they did not give all of their support with documents. They were sent letters um, as to what was needed, and they did not return them at the time they had to return them. 
All of these can be cured with the supporting documents if they get it into us before uh, the fields go out, or they can even appeal the denial during the notice uh, process in those 45 days. So most of these can be cured. Some of them were denied because the properties were sold. They were not the owner as of January 1. If they applied for 62 years, they did not, they were not 62 as of January 1. Uh, other reasons like that as to why they were not approved. But the majority were, they did not provide the supporting documents. I want to thank our homestead specialist for all the hard work that she did. She was kind of put in this position halfway through the season <laughs> of getting these done. She did get some help from one of our new appraisers, uh, Stephen Waters. But I want to thank Lauren uh, Fields for all the hard work that she did with process and these. They came in and stayed late. They came in on weekends to get all of these applications processed. So I want to thank them for all their hard work for doing that. Um, any questions on anything? Just a yep. quick question. Is this, okay. uh, and again, thanks to the staff there. Great job. Yes, uh, so, um, certainly appreciate the extra effort. Is there opportunity we could continue to track this for 2023 and just to show a trend analysis for like the approvals, removals, and denials? What do you mean? Yes, we can. Go up yes, and down. Okay. Yeah, like a trend analysis, just so we can see kind of what how things are moving in the market there. I'm just curious if there's a way that, you know, from one year to year from uh, if we okay. did 2023, just to have a trend analysis. Okay, let's see what we can do. Okay, yeah, I think that would be helpful for information as we go into the analysis and I'm um, looking at the metrics here. Okay. Well, as usual, Martin uh, speaks, <laughs> speaks for me. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, if this is a year to date number, if we do have uh, historical year to date comparisons, uh, simple, essentially the same question. I see what I can find out on we got for the prior years. And it's a struggle to find even up. Okay. Uh, I understand. It's a lot of work. It was a little struggle. Yeah, I appreciate um, it. With the new system that we have coming, I'm quite sure that we easily more. Uh, do a trend analysis going forward with the new system, but I can see what I can find for the prior years too. Okay. Thank you. Next is on the report. We need to get approval for the denials and the approval. I understand both of the homestead denials as we have to do. Make a motion that we approve the homestead application denials. Okay. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion. Yeah. Yes. Good. Good. Uh, good. morning. Personal property uh, this year will be sending out seventeen hundred and sixty-seven notices for assessment. Um, these notices are of value changes, depreciations, mainly based on uh, the taxpayers are not accepting the value that we get. They indicated so they uh, put a return value out of a lower amount. So all those will get notices, and also any new property that came online as far as we want to digest the also get notices. Um, that being said, we ran some numbers, and I know y'all like numbers. <laughs> uh, there's actually a 19 percent increase from year to year in value of the personal property. 2021 to 2022, which uh, I thought was excellent. And it's basically coming from just digging, digging deep and pushing forward, getting people to file the returns accurately, um, and finding some property that you didn't know that you did before. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, and I also want to thank my staff for the other 
it's almost like the things that came in the weekends and processes and returns. Uh, then my, with my staff being fairly unique, uh, not really knowing everything they needed to do up front when they first got in, they pretty much came in and figured it out. We got the work done, we came in the weekends, stayed late at night, and we processed uh, 7,238 returns uh, over the course of the last three weeks. So just just understand that that 19% has increased with the number of returns, not value itself. Value. It was about it. Value increase. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Need any approval of these? Um, I need the approval to send those out to this. Okay. I'll send you the notices out. I make approval that we uh, approve the percentages and the numbers that have been presented um, today so that they can be transmitted accordingly. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I'll take say hi. All right. All right. Thank you, Eugene. No, go ahead. Are you done? Okay. I don't need it. I'm just. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to pass out um, the template. Back in February, I brought a template to the Board of Assessors to approve um, a cost increase overall from a, a dollar, $125 to $135 on the residential um, portion of the digest. And um, this is a final study of those templates that was approved back in February. I think it was February. <clears throat> but I'm um, passing it out to the board. And I left my copy in the program. <laughs> <laughs> the requirements set by the Department of Revenue is we have to be at a ratio between 36% and 44%. And it's very hard to hit every neighborhood with that percentage. But when you have an overall in that range, um, you know, that's that's an acceptable rate by the Department of Revenue. Um, Adrian has put up our final actual ratio on on all the neighborhoods in the county. And you'll see that the overall median there is 3805. Um, so that's what we ended up with overall. <clears throat> and how we ended up with that um, ratio was um, we studied the market and adjusted the increment factors to reflect what the market was doing. And what I found is that the lower price homes were selling at a higher rate than the higher price homes. So um, I did some adjustments on that to, to reflect how the market um, was dictating that. But um, getting back at the template here, you'll see we had finished up with that base cost at $130. Um, we actually went up to $135. Um, this was just a... Uh, uh, a dry run, so to speak, but you'll see the final ratio is compared to what we started in the beginning at the current meeting at 2887. That's on Brookfield, Brookfield Village. We ended up at 3446. And then at Gateway, we were at a, a meeting to begin with at 3463. We ended up at 3789. And Willis North was at 2640. Our ratio went to 40 21 and tributary at New Manchester. The ratio was at 36 74. 
and that was increased to 41.28. Montage Manor was at 27.71. The ratio, final ratio was 38.10. Ashworth Landing was at 28.88, and our final ratio ended at 32.90. Trotter's Run was at 32.57, and the final ratio was at 41.95. Kensington Run was at 31.94, and our final ratio was 34.92. So you see, even when you make adjustments in the system, it's going to be a variable range throughout the whole county. And this is just an, just an idea how, how it ends up. But um, with that being said, we, we got the digest up to an acceptable range, and, and that was uh, an overall 3,723 sales that uh, we looked at this year. Um, I also wanted to talk about the neighborhood counts and totals and changes and this to be approved by the board. Adrian, do you have that? Yes, give me a second. Okay. While we're waiting on that, and I guess this may be a question for Steve. The, the base cost going up for the lower home value, is there, a, would you say that's attributed to investor activity or is there any way to determine that? Okay, the base cost went up for all homes. It's not just for the homes. What she saw was uh, it went up higher. It, it's no, it, for all. But what the results show that there was a bias on the lower price homes. But that's fixed. That was um, pretty much almost pure. The um, price related differential of one is showing that we are right on the money. It's greater than one, it's showing a bias towards the higher price home. If it's less than one, or a bias towards the lower price home, the, the lower value home. But it's, um, if you saw the number, it was um, 1.0 something. So it was um, for our purposes. That's a one. So we 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 cured the bias. It was was a very good ratio. Yeah. So we, the numbers we are shooting for is um, between thirty six and forty four, and uh, we need to be below fifteen percent point zero one with COD, and we need to be at one more or less with the PRD. The price related differential and the coefficient of this version. So we are we're there. We are it, it was a beautiful thing. In this market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we had a different market uh, than I've ever seen in this office. That's that's a true story. Um what Adrian, I don't know if everybody can see those numbers. Um but this is a lengthy um there you go. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> 21 pages in all the neighborhoods um, with the previous, we've, we've got the, the, the neighborhood number, the neighborhood name, the par, parcel count in that neighborhood, the previous value, the current value, and then the percent difference in each neighborhood. Um, I can read them all if you prefer. <laughs> or, um, but this is this yeah, this, 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 <laughs> when you get into these 21 pages of all the neighborhoods, um, we have 54,638 counts in all neighborhoods, parcel, parcel count. And the previous total was 13 billion, 516 million. $48,189. And we ended up uh, by making these changes at $16,271,206,968. And that was roughly a 20.38% increase. That's basically the overall increase on the total benefits from last year to this year. I think that's uh, reasonable. I, Cobb County, I looked at their numbers, they had a 23% increase. Coweta County had a 23% increase. Coral County had a 
more or less at 25% increase. So at 20%, I think we are very concerned overall based on this market. Okay, and um, just a disclaimer, um, this is, as of today's day, I still do not have the final number with the commercial property that was um, set out for um, commercial property review. The final number should come in today. So the updates are in it, but I don't have the final number for commercial property. So it's it's subject to a little change, but um, what's your what's your feeling about the commercial property? It's um it's looking good in terms of the percentage increase. I um, right now it's falling between fifteen to twenty percent also. Yeah, and the commercial is included in this right now, but it's not the same. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I I would like a motion to approve the residential portion of the digest. I would entertain a motion. I make a motion that we approve the residential uh, changes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? On those that are. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks on the agenda. Chief of Rachel coming. Okay, and um, I just want to. One is industrial, one is so this is i'm sorry um martin i just printed this so I, I don't have a copy sent to you but no worries it's just, it's just looking at the overall ratio for the commercial properties and the industrial properties the commercial is currently as of this morning at 38.71 um with the um, with commercial properties, the coefficient of dispersion is um, up to twenty percent. We are at um, seventeen point four six. The PRD, as you can see, is at one point nine, one point three. So it is showing some bias. So we are that's what we are looking at right now with commercial. With industrial, we are we are pretty good. Um, we are thirty nine point eight three. The COD is at 0.1418 and the PRC is at 0.9666. So um, we're pretty good uh, where industrial is concerned. That, and uh, commercial, it's, uh, I'm awaiting um, the final call for today. But that's where we are with the sales ratios regarding uh, the 2022 assessment notices. We are looking good. Last year, our ratio was a little higher. It was at 38.72. This year, we're looking, um, we're going to be about 38.13 overall. But it's good um, with a sales ratio of 38%, which is roughly 90%. We're looking at 100% values. We allowed by the Department of Revenue to, to collect. Um, 100% of utilities. So we can collect utilities at 40%. If we are below the, the, the 38%, and it's prorated. So we will be able to get 100% of our utilities, which is good. And that's yeah. what we aim for every year. Um, we are awaiting final numbers for the commercial properties. They are working. They, they too were delayed. We should have gotten to some of them. But, um, it is what it is. So, so the notices are red, and pretty much we need to get it to the printers to get it out. Our 
today for all the residential is to have it to the uh, taxpayers by the 24th. Uh, so we're looking for a mail date of June 24th for, uh, for 51,124 is all the residential property. And um, we're looking for a mail date of the commercial properties and industrial uh, on July 1st. So we're on target, we will meet our deadline. That's what I have for the board of things. Sorry, work, it took a lot of hard work. I'm just curious, are these number of samples, are these random samples or is this the total population? Or different? Which, what are you looking at? Uh, number of samples, 21 for industrial, 117 for commercial. And those are the sales, those are, um, Sales, actual oh. sales. Okay. Yeah. And uh, when I say sales, it's qualified sales. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you, you're looking at the, the one for residential. So you'll see for residential, it was a lot more qualified sales. It was like. Uh, Five thousand. Quarter. Three thousand seven hundred. Yeah. Is that commercial and Yeah. No, that was for regular. Oh, yeah. When we oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, that one before. I don't. Yeah. You looked at that sample size. That was three thousand seven hundred. Nice. Yeah, and those are qualified sales. So that's it for um, my report. So uh, notices will be out, uh, mailed on the 24th, June 24th, uh, most of our 5,120 notices uh, will, will go out for real and the, the rest will go out for uh, mail date of July 1st. Yes. Okay. Yes, we are the statutory deadline is on or before July 1st. Okay. That was great. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to drop, but I will get the um, updates in regards to the next meeting um, coming up shortly. But thank you, and I will be talking with you shortly. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. So, yes, we want to move to discuss an item to executive session. And very little will, will lead us to that. So, you can't stand the phone, you just put on me.
What's the next part important thing? Set the bank or Nick Yep. Well, we, we said we wanted to do it earlier. But I want to do, do it next week. To give everybody a chance to look at this thing. I don't I two weeks. Let's let's do it the two weeks. Um, I mean, let's see. July the fourth is on Monday. It's a holiday. Don't do so. Yeah. Ever to get so, ready to take? Six to two weeks. I'll probably be gone, but I can change the birthday. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So you want to try it? Well, I'm I, I'm I'm probably gonna leave. Like July the first, or second. July the first, or the third. They can give us a week and a day to look at the to yeah. review this. Yeah. Uh, that works for you. Y'all don't give July the fourth that first. I would only. I have to see if I already do come the first, but I could do it virtually. My mom's got a hip replacement on the thirtieth, the day before. So. <laughs> Yeah. 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 The three of us can will have a four. The main thing will be to approve the storage of the thing for quick. I feel some, I'm not I'm saying this out loud, I have to be careful approving what an attorney had written. Either they did it well or they did not. <laughs> But uh, take <laughs> but however, looking at a red line version, which I guess you'll make available to us on, on, yeah, on the yeah, yeah, uh, emails that before you get home, we do it there. Yeah, I can I can look at an uh an attachment and uh compare them and think about it a lot and come in here and have a considered opinion when we have a meeting on you about first. It shouldn't take the thing is, um, if it's okay for uh, a board, Ron Robin, and um, look and approve, um, I'm fine, and then you can set the meeting two weeks for, uh, for the approval of this document. So it's it's really uh, you mean like uh, approve it on with a uh, uh, just to clarify, uh, respond to email saying it, yeah, I think it's a meeting of the minds with the, among the board and. You know, so um, and then you could come in for uh, that's still an approval <laughs> or set it down. No, let's just discuss amongst ourselves. But I have that, that work for me too. I don't know if we have to have an official meeting. What do you mean? Once, on? the, once three board members are meeting, um, it should be an open meeting. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, there are, yeah. there's, a, there's a law regarding. Having meetings and not the oh, it, it, it has to be considered. I'm going to have to come in July the first. I'm available. Okay, that's at least three of us. Well, they form Mark, he may be able to do first. Right. He may be able to do first of two. Oh, yeah. The last person. The last person. It's your line. What's it like? Paul would be on the golf course somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would like to be present now. Okay, so it's July 1st. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, it's going to be a, a somewhat abbreviated meeting. Yeah, I'll be virtual with that's okay. Yeah, as long as we have three. I'll, I'll come in. Meeting. It's, it's a forum. Can I do it back home? Yeah, this, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Yeah. We'll put you on the conference. Yeah, you can dial into the conference. Yeah. yeah. You can. There's a number. There's a phone number on the link. Just dial that number, put the code in. You can. You're good to go to. Yeah. 
We don't have to see you, just your voice. It's virtual. <laughs> So long as it's just typical melodious voice. Yeah, melodious. Yeah, melodious. You've got to have to let mine be a real word about me. <laughs> <laughs> it's in B.O.B. dictionary. Well, that's it. Well, we can have both to return. I think most of my way to turn today. I'll do it. Say hi. Thanks for being here, folks. So.